Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Rise and Write with Grace and James. I'm Grace. I'm James. James. And this is a place for creators, collaborators, and fun company for the journey. Today we have Jennifer Bryant out of Honolulu, Hawaii, um, who's going to talk with us about, uh, she is a writer, podcaster, author, a student, a teacher, and oh, by the way, she owns a restaurant on top of all of that. <laughs> um, we're going to talk to her about her uh, fish tacos. Yeah. Well, fish tacos. Um, we're going to talk to her about what it means mm. to have a practical family. Jen, or Jen, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. This is a blast. I love it. Thank you. Oh, great. So tell us, for, I know I have a long list of things you're working on, but I want to know first, what does practical family mean to you? Oh, well, it, I named my website Practical Family when I came home from working full time. All right. And I was figuring out the, the domestic life. I mean, I, I had always worked. I was kind of that like, you know, school going um, working girl since I was like 15 or something. And when I needed to come home, I, I was learning a lot of things. I mean, you know, mom knows how to do dishes, do laundry and stuff, but just making sense of what that life meant for me. And I thought, well, I want to start blogging. I want to start talking about this. What do I call my site? Well, who am I? What kind of person am I? And I'm like, I'm very practical. I am not going to uh, have like a lot of fluff or figurines or, you know, extra stuff that's not necessary. I'm a very pragmatic person. Um, I, I studied to be a teacher. I'm all about like education and, you know, graphic organizers and things like that. And I love to just get down to the, to the point of things. And so I said, that's, that's what I'm going to bring to this website. Um, I want to help moms and uh, some dads if they want to figure out how to do the family life thing practically and not worry about stuff that doesn't really matter. That's interesting. So what are your like your banner topics? So we started talking about um, homemaking and I realized that very soon it wasn't so much about this is what you need to do to keep a house. It was more about the emotional stress that came behind that for moms and so when i when i started talking about like practically you only need this kind of furniture or here's a cleaning system that might work for you um very quickly i realized that moms need more of that emotional moral support and that's what i feel more ready to bring like it's okay you don't have to do all the things to be worthy in the place that you're in right now as a mom, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it, it has slowly morphed uh, from that. Uh, I also was offering uh, a lot of homeschool help too, because I do homeschool my, my two kids. They're preteens right now. So a lot of the moms of little, little kids needed help realizing what they needed to do, like how much is enough. And I kept hearing this word enough, enough. I'm like, Okay, moms don't feel like they're doing enough for their kids, whether they're homeschooling or taking care of the house or keeping, keeping things in order, right? And I'm like, I want to give them practical solutions to these everyday problems, but first they need to know that they're enough where they are, you know? So eventually I, I started a podcast where I brought other authors and speakers on to talk about these topics and it all sort of tended to go in the direction of, it's okay, you don't need to do more to be valuable you know? Mm. And so I, I started, um, part of what I'm working on right now is developing a uh, curriculum and a sort of a collective uh, based on this enoughness topic. So right. I, we're going to start bringing in people to talk specifically about when you feel this way, what is happening, whether it's brain science or, or the practicality behind it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's morphed and I think it's okay to, uh, to start somewhere and then just see where it goes, you know? Yeah, that's why I love your, um, it's, your title is kind of um, all encompassing. It's a good umbrella, I think mm -hmm. is a good, is a good word, you know, like that you can branch off in many different directions on it. Money, finance, you know, um, planning, travel, family travel. Yeah, and, and, and the enough, I really like the idea of enough because we're constantly bombarded with social media and other things of so people who have a per better, perfect body, a bigger house, a perfect family. This is what a Hallmark Christmas is supposed to look like. Oh. Everybody's smiling. Everyone, there's no, 
like this is what family life, business life, whatever life is supposed to look like. And we know that that's not oftentimes the case once they're done taking the picture. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? You know, then there's a yelling match about the cookies or something, you know, and it's like, whoa, that wasn't, but we are, you know. Um, that, sh that should be the holiday card. <laughs> my mom, and she'll probably watch, but you know, she watches Facebook and she always sees all these pictures and I keep saying, mom, that's Facebook. I'm not, I'm not saying they're not, they're miserable people or whatever. I have, I have no idea, but the enough thing is important because sometimes we can always feel like, especially now where I feel like social media, we can always feel like we're just not, we just should be doing a little bit more. Yeah. So I like that a yeah. lot. How, how does, how do you manifest, how does yeah. that manifest in your life? Do you ever feel like you're not doing enough and then you have to, how is your process to be like, maybe get into a better place with feeling like you are doing enough? Sure. No, that, that is an excellent question. And I think that it's, it's a great um, conversation to start and to keep having. So I'm so glad we're talking about this here um, because I want to continue talking with not just, um, not just mothers, but other creatives as well. Because I feel so passionately about people giving themselves permission to let that be enough or let this be enough or let, okay, I can work on something for a little bit of time and I don't have to be all or nothing about it. Um, I talk to my sister often and she's in that toddler stage right now as, as a mother. And, and as I'm hearing about her struggles, it's reminding me a lot of what I go through as a creative, but also taking me back to the days of young motherhood. And she's going, oh, I just feel like if I can't get like the whole kitchen clean at once, then I, I failed. I'm like, what? You can just do the dishes, just wipe the counter and it's, mm -hmm. it's okay. Just like get stuff clear and then come back to it. Why do you feel like that's not okay? Or that's not, it's, it's not enough. I haven't done it to the fullest expectation. And I started thinking, wow, this is a lot of how I struggle sometimes with the writing. Like if I sit down and do, want to do a blog post, I want to do it from start to finish. Like my brain is telling me, do it all, finish it now, because I'm, I'm driven like that. And I want, I'm very task oriented person. I'm not a perfectionist, but I feel like I have those tendencies sometimes. So coming out of, out of that, that want to, to be in that black and white thinking requires that we have permission, for, that we give ourselves permission to just do a little bit. Um, so that is, that is a lot of how I've been coping lately with projects is saying, okay, this is good. You did good work in this 15 minutes or this half hour, or you're going to sit down for an hour with a timer because my brain needs that. I'm a little bit ADD and I need to look at something and know I'm only going to do this task for this time. And then it's, an, it's enough. So yeah, out of that. I, mentioned, yeah. I, mentioned oh, social, I mentioned social media. Where, what other places do you feel people um, are taught that they're not enough? You know what I mean? I mean, social media is relatively recent, but growing up, child family of origin like we all have i think a little bit of not enough and i'm just wondering what you've experienced with moms about um where their not enough comes from on a deep maybe a little deeper level yes great question uh it comes from i'm finding a few different places uh, yes family of origin it could be how they've related to their parents or their um any grown-up who has raised them and it's always messages like uh, like for instance, finish all the food on your plate. You can't be done with dinner until you eat all your food. So that can be easily translated to become a family value and then like an internal internalized value that I am not finished until all of it is finished. Mm -hmm. So those ideas can translate to our, our goodness, our sense of morality. Mm -hmm. It can translate to I am not going to start a project because I know I won't be able to finish it. And that's what we kind of call um, uh, being a frustrated perfectionist. <laughs> uh, I won't tackle something that I know I'm being called to maybe because it seems so big or it seems so hard. And I know that if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. So I'm going to finish it. But I think we can, can mix up those, those messages in our mind. So it can come from an outside source. I'm, I'm realizing when I hear these stories of moms, it can come from a particular person, but it can also be internalized truths 
that we convince ourselves of, you know? Mm -hmm. It can be high expectations we have for ourselves, either because of people pleasing or because we come from a codependent uh, situation at home, or maybe it's developed into that in our own relationships, our own marriage. And, and we just don't know how to say no because we don't know how, um, we don't know what we need for ourselves. And so if you tend to be that type of creative where you want to do these things, but you're so drawn to like please other people first or take care of other people's stuff mm -hmm. before your own or take care of anyone else before yourself and this is this is mom thing right mom has to take care of everyone before herself um and then you don't make room for that like you don't set your timers you don't say i need to be alone right now like i had to tell my kids you need to not be on your video games mm -hmm. while i'm doing this interview because you know we need to respect the people who are recording this interview <laughs> and they can't be hearing you in the background so it's just being very clear about those things and and learning to be more courageous about communicating what you need mm -hmm. um and sometimes that conversation needs to happen inside of us first so that we can say it to other people right? are you uh you're obviously familiar mm -hmm. with the enneagram right yes yeah are you i'm just guessing are you a five no i'm not a five no oh okay all right That's wonderful five friends so i know yeah. about them. okay all right yeah i was um, I'm a two-wing two three, so oh, okay. I'm a helper, teacher, counselor type person. Of course, yeah. I'm very motivated as a three. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm more of a three than a perfectionist one. Yeah, I think as yeah, I think as far as the um, the trying of things, like one, I'm a five, and one of the problems I've had with um, allowing myself to do things imperfectly, it turned out was not perfectionism; it mm -hmm. was thoroughness. Like mm -hmm. I wanted to be thorough. So if I'm going to start a video podcast, I want to see it through or I need to know what the finish line is or how far are we going to go with it? How long until we reevaluate, you know, like I hate to start stuff and not finish it. That's, it's very bothersome to me. So I would wind up not starting things um, because I don't, because I don't have the end game laid out and um, perfectly at all even sometimes i just like to know that there's an end point in case it's not working that i have permission mm -hmm. to put it down yes, um, sure. yeah so that's interesting i know that um so not enoughness shows up in different ways for different people um yes. uh, now speaking of all the i want to get into your writing because speaking of enough you have a lot going on <laughs> oh, oh okay so it looks like that let me just clarify because you you mentioned me owning a restaurant which is true yeah i don't run the day to day of the restaurant that is all my husband he does all the management of that i manage our social media and website which doesn't require a whole lot okay <laughs> That's a lot of yelp reviews to respond to i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but he says that. So it's 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 our family business. It's what sustains us. It's it's what allows me to write, you guys. Oh, I'm so right. incredibly grateful. It allows me to homeschool our kids. Yeah. And to follow this passion and now I'm I'm able to build this um, you know, business and different streams of income and just uh, do do what I love to do and I love to communicate and help people come to better more efficient ways to to communicate and to get what they need, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, our business allows for that. And thank God people love fish tacos because yeah. Yeah. who doesn't love a fish taco? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. The lifeblood. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I can't um think. so uh so you most recently you've written a book. Mm. That's the big uh that's your biggest um what's the word? writing yeah achievement is huge and yeah i mean my, my most recent win yes <laughs> most recent win. i like that so tell us about the book and then i want to find out the backstory on when when you thought of it how long it's taken you the all the nitty-gritty yeah. yeah oh it's a you fun a story you have a copy there to show oh i do i do here <laughs> Yay. Oh, wow. it's, called, it's called 25 days of jesus it's an advent journey through the gospel of luke so i'm coming at it from a faith-based perspective i'm also trained in theology and philosophy and so it was a chance to use that uh part of my background and my love for just the bible you know <laughs> and helping people understand um possibly hard concepts as if they've never um, tackled something like, like a Christian scripture before, you know, but 
it going along with um, the Christian tradition of Advent, which is what a lot of families follow, they like to do devotions mm -hmm. from December 1st to the 25th. And it's, and it's a time of remembering and leading up to Christmas. But it's just, it's a hundred page um, book. It's not thick. It didn't even have room to put the title here on the spine. <laughs> but I self-published it through Amazon and also through Ingram Spark. And the devotions are very short, very, and I made it simple on purpose. Beautiful so, layout. Yes, very nice. Well short. done. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It's, I wanted to make something that was consumable, to easily consumable for families, but also something that I could still see as a very meaningful project that that was doable for me you know because each of the devotions it's it's like 200 words each so if you just dedicate what like 15 to 30 minutes a day to write one devotion for for a month you've got a little devotional book you know it's not right. it doesn't have to be as hard as it feels as <laughs> as a creator so i had to just just um for the lack of a better uh, term pull the trigger on it and just do it and so i decided to do it in September, because I was like, if I'm going to do this, it better be no for the way. season. Yeah. This yeah. September. Yeah. So, so oh. this is the thing. I did the majority of the writing a couple years ago, because I had this, this idea, and I just offered it as, as like a free book on my website. And then this September, I said, I'm just going to take those rough devotionals that I just, I just put out there for my email list. What if I just self-publish it? Like, how hard can this be? It turns out it was more complicated than <laughs> than I anticipated. So I hired someone to just help me get it up on Kindle Direct Publishing. She was a lifesaver. I loved working with her as that technical partner. All those things that I could have done, but would have been mentally, emotionally, probably spiritually draining. So working in partnership with folks who can just do certain pieces for you of the publishing process was gold. That's, That's a great soundbite. Yeah. Working yeah. In with partnerships with people who maybe have strengths you don't or, you yeah. know. And the time yeah. that I don't have, yeah. Time and strength, yeah, that makes so a lot of sense. So there's a couple things here to dig into. Repurposing, first of all, you didn't feel the need to write original. You took something that you've already, you've, Pre previously published well previously written material and re packaged it in a beautiful package by the way i love the warmth of the cover it's Thank really you. yeah did you do the cover design or did someone do it for you i did not i usually design most of my things on canva that's mm -hmm. one of my favorite digital tools but i hired someone to do this on fiverr fiverr wow. People, talented, talented people on Fiverr. If you find um, other book covers that they've done and you go, yes, I like your style. So this woman, I think, was from Germany. And really, really the awesome. The, yeah, and I even talked to her about, you know, she at first she she did the whole cover and I said, I love, I love the feel of that. I gave her some photos that um, I like that she kind of made it her own and then she had put camels over here and i was like oh but the camels aren't in luke's gospel so i got real like writer technical about it and you. I was like, can you put some crosses here because it's about the journey of, of the life of jesus and we just we collaborated so um well on it and i felt confident about even just asking for what i needed the book to look like mm -hmm. right because sometimes we feel at the mercy of people who are more creative than us, like the, the designers, right? But I knew that because it was my book, it needed to be a certain way. But people who are in design, they know how to, they know how to translate what you mean to what it needs to look like. And mm -hmm. that process, it became, you know, um, over the course of a few days, it, it, just don't draw it out too far because you're going to end up frustrated <laughs> if if you need it to be more nitpicky than it needs to be kind of thing i think would be advice in the design area but you know it just it needs to be the final product that you're happy with too yeah that's great yeah. now you started in september of this year with mm -hmm. your material right mm -hmm. how long until you hit um whatever publish publish to Kindle? we're done like 
or whatever it, it is. And it finally published, I think, mid October. No, I but when did you October. like let it? Like, when did you? When was your work done? When was your work done? Like, mm. you have the cover, the layout, everything is together, You're and done. you send it off for yeah within a month. So what, when I when I decided to put it together, so even if you have pre existing material. Um, in order to make it a hundred pages, I had to throw in extra things. And I was like, what am I going to do? Am I going to have like journal pages? Am I going to do just image pages? And I thought, no, I want to put recipes in there. And it turns out that the recipes, there are 12 recipes in interspersed in there. And there are 12 um, lyrics to classic Christmas carols. Mm. And those Christmas carols are usually based mm. in, in biblical concepts, right? Like we three kings from Orient are bearing gifts, we travel so far. It, and so referencing those with scripture really was attractive to the Christian audience who's buying this book. They, the, and the recipes are interactive, right? So it, it, as much as you can help your project to be interactive, whether it's in the book or whether you offer resources on your website um, outside of the book, that was my goal. Like I need as many people to have a reason to engage with this material mm. as possible and for it to be easily consumable. Wow. That is that's amazing. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Right. No, that's, so, that's so it's great. ready. That's ready to go. That's, and now you're going to be promoting it all through December, I'm sure, right? Yeah. On, I assume, yeah. social media, Instagram, yeah. all that stuff, TikTok. Whatever. Social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok is <laughs> becoming more and more that's important. Amazing. Yeah, I saw that you're on there. That's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. So how do you, with all this going on, so not only now you're adding the home, you have the homeschooling, you have your fam, your house, your husband, your kids, um, your restaurant, which you could say <laughs> you're not running it, but you're running it. I know what's involved. It's a lot. It takes up I a lot of food. I order lunch and dinner. <laughs> you can't take your eyes off of that. I know. Um, and then I know you do work for other people and mm -hmm. now you're promoting your own thing. How are you structuring your days? Oh, great question. Every day is different. I'm sorry. I wish I could say mm. it's structured the same way, but every day is different. I, I'm a big believer in time blocking. Um, I don't always do it perfectly, but basically that means you, sit, you make appointments with yourself and you say, I'm only doing this during this time and, and what I get done during this time um, is, is adding value to, to my business or to my writing project. Mm -hmm. um, timers, I'm big, big on timers. And when I mentioned being ADD before, I really am. Like that's my, I have a neurodivergent brain and I have to have visuals around me to remind me of what's going on. I have to have things or I'm doing like a, like a nine days of giveaway and I have this actively on my desk. So I'm like, okay, Jen, you're talking about these topics on these days in your Facebook group and you're showing them your book and you're showing them your face, right? It's got to be top of mind and it's got to be in front of me. Um, the way that I structure my day, you know, like coffee is important to me in the morning. Like <laughs> I have to have my cup in the morning I get up and I check my, my emails and my projects, whether I'm doing writing, whether I'm doing promoting, or it, they're not always happening at the same time, okay? So it's not like it, if you see all the things this person is doing in life, it's not all happening at the same time. It's just, it's just got to kind of flow because we only have so much white space in our calendar, right? And speaking of being a visual person, I need to use my, my Google Calendar. It's got, for me, it's got to be on my phone. Um, and you know, <laughs> this is my week. My days are color coded like this. Can you see this? Oh, oh that's yeah. beautiful. Oh, great. Yeah. It has, that's and that's super helpful. Yeah. That's the color coded time blocking. So I know what's going on. And even my husband came to me last night and says, okay, tomorrow looks like this, but does it mean this? Cause you know, I'm the keeper of our family calendar. So he has to check in with me on what stuff means and where we're going to be and who's driving kids where. And, and so that visual is super important. And I realized that once I realized that not everybody works that way, um, I'm going, okay, we all need to find what, what works for our brain because we all process differently. And that goes back to the learning, right? Just knowing about how you learn best, how other people learn best and how you can best 
communicate those needs to each other. Right. What is your horizon? Are you working um, in your own mind? Are you going day to day, week to week, month to month? Like, what is your horizon on the create on your? I don't even want to say creative because it's there's a lot of practical in there too. On your your content front, when it comes to my content, um, I have long term goals, and then I have short term goals, and then I have just open flexible because you know like for interviews like this i know that if i'm promoting a book or if i uh i just want to talk about and encourage other creative people i want to be open to you know being a guest on podcast i want to i, I leave some of that open mm -hmm. so um one of the cool tools i've used recently is is calendly um, mm -hmm. and it automatically will schedule uh, i can just send my availabilities to someone without going back and forth this is where it gets practical I don't like to waste time going back and forth when there's an easier way to communicate something, right? So I will send my availability in a link and say, mm -hmm. sure, I'll meet with you. Um, or I'll, I'll, I'm happy to interview. This is my time, pick what works for you. Um, instead of going over this mental, uh, because I know the things that take more mental strain on my brain. Mm -hmm. And this is part of, as a creative, you have to be kind to yourself. And you have to know yourself, first of all, you have to be kind to yourself, second of all, and be able and willing to say no and to be, and, or yes, and to be, and to put tools in place in your life that help you and other people and your family. So like, you know, if I showed you my calendar, you see a lot of orange there. The orange is like the time that I'm homeschooling my kids. Mm. So generally speaking, I try to keep stuff outside of that time right. for them. That's great. That's really great. And that gives you the space because one of the things I noticed this week for us, we had some news break on a project that we're working on and the re the re the reaction and the response time is taking up mm -hmm. um, a lot more time than I thought. Like it's not enough that we had the news, then we have to share it and we want to share it and we want to react to people who are happy for us. Like you have to block out the reaction time. Um, so for you as well, like um, with your book, like you're going to get reviews or people are going to reach out, like you need to build in time to respond, right? Well, you know, that's interesting because I can, I speak for me, I can respond pretty much on the fly to most things. Mm. And that's probably because I'm connected <laughs> with, with this device. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a time where we do, we do need to put our devices down, right? And we have to know that you know, I've got to go outside, I've got to get fresh air, I've got to, you know, and not be so connected, but I'm able to, I think we all have to decide who to respond to when, because sometimes I get texts and I'm like, they don't need to know this right now. It's okay, and this is kind of the, the, the recovering people pleaser in me too, it's okay to not respond to this immediately. I'm going to tackle this when I'm home and after I nap or whatever right, you right. Know? yeah and and um and lately this is what's been happening lately because i publish a book and because i'm promoting it people are asking me left and right to teach them about how i got my book published oh. it's it's it has has been said that i, I think statistically like 85 percent of americans want to publish a book but every year one percent of them actually does it right and uh they there's always going to be the curious folks and the creatives like oh i want to do that but you know that if you've done anything creative if you if you've taken that risk and stepped out and, and started a video podcast like you're doing you know that it takes extra hurdles to purpose to do that and if people are still going to ask you about how to do it you only have so much time in your day so enough people ask you and and now i'm just like that's great that you want to do that. I'm going to put together a Zoom Q&A on this date. Let me know if you're interested and you can join me then. I was just going to say, I'll sign up for that course because yeah. <laughs> I, you may know that I have 35,000 words of a nonfiction book. I call it my mm. grief book is written, but the parts that you're talking about, the packaging, the layout, the cover, all of that, I know that that's going to be a huge effort to, for me to make the time to do that. And mm -hmm. it's a whole different skill set now that I have to learn in order to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm looking for the 
you know, I'm look not that I'm not saying it's simple, but I'm looking for the direct instructions like okay today your assignment is to reach out on fiverr and look at five cover designs and see which one you like and reach out to those people and then find the layout person and then find the well probably the editor would be first but see i don't even i, I know i have i'm afraid of what i don't know because i know it's not yeah. a lot or it's, oh that's so good yeah. though i mean but but even you just being able to voice that to another person or you know you talk with each other right about like your dreams and your projects and things but then reaching outside of yourself to other people who are doing the thing is so life-giving and it gives you permission to say oh no I could do that or it's just someone asking and this is what I'll, I'll tell people in the in the um in the talk and I'll give you a little preview because I'm realizing that it's not that people are afraid of doing seemingly impossible things. It's just that they don't know what it looks like yet. And if you're not willing to, to try and to risk, this may take more time than I bargained for, but I know that I have the right to cut it off at a certain time because I'm my own person. I have like autonomy and I can say, okay, this is enough for right now. I need to come back to this later. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people like me, and other people who have published way more books than I have can tell you that um, such and such thing should only take this much time. But if it takes more, these are the things you can consider, right? So it, it's workshopping it, it's networking and just using other people's brains that um, allows you to maybe be kinder to yourself if, you're, if your brain is warning you like, no, this is going to be too much energy or something, you know, whatever the fives worry about, right? You're worried that you're, you're, it's going to be a time suck or something. Um, but you no, know, just doing, doing that with other people and continuing to ask questions is, is so good. Yeah, okay. yeah. So keep us posted on that because I will share that for sure. My fear as a five is the not hitting the finish line always. Like I want to know if I pick it up, that I'm going to see it through. So that's why for me, like Tanya helped me get my Facebook page set up because she literally gave me like a checklist of, of like 10, th Tanya Kubo is who I'm referring to, uh, 10 things like do this, do this, do this. And I'm like, okay, I know at the end of this list, I'm going to hit go public or whatever it is. And it's yeah. going to be there and I'm going to have done it. And then I can walk away. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Um, so what day, what time do you start your day with? My day, um, usually I'm up around seven-ish. Um, some mornings I get up earlier because I have a, a business builders mastermind that I'm involved in. So those are my people and we'll get up and work together for an hour on certain days of the week. And that just moves us all forward. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So some days that I'm up from like six to seven, but normally it's like seven get my coffee, see if the kids are up yet. You know, um, I don't require them to have like a hard wake up time. I just, that's the beauty of homeschool to me. I mean, other people do it differently, but I allow, them to, <laughs> <laughs> I allow them to wake up when their body needs to wake up, depending on what we did the night before. But we try to start things around nine ish, <laughs> say nine ish. And we try to finish around 12 or one. Um, mm -hmm. And just, naturally do things and sometimes when they're the things they need me for um immediately are like math uh i walk them through writing we do fun things with speaking that helps me um hone my skill better and it teaches them skills of public speaking so we do a lot of things like that together we talk about logic and and reasoning and you know thinking critically and stuff like that so a lot of what i do anyway is with them and while they're working on something, I'll have my laptop and just right. finishing up something I do. So I just kind of find time. And then in the afternoon, I have more time for meetings and things. And then after that is kids' activities and dinner and stuff. So, so um, I want to ask, I know, we're, I know we're, it's, we're done running out of time here. I just want to ask real quick. I mean, obviously, education is extremely important to you. And I'm curious why. I mean, usually when people think of education, it's like, well, to get into a good college, to get a good job. But it sounds like even education on how to publish a book, that education is, well, at least for me, much deeper than just like, well, you do this and then you get into this college and you get an internship or whatever. And I'm wondering what, why education is so important to you and 
you know, what is it, what do you feel like it means to people in people's lives to be educated? Because I think sometimes there's differing opinions on what education really means and how it can benefit our lives. Oh, that's a great question. Like the purpose, right? Where I'm coming from, <clears throat> um, the need for this. I think I'm naturally driven as, a, as, as a, an educator. I'm, I'm a natural teacher there's something that just bubbles up inside of me that's like, people need to know stuff. And I'm thinking, why do people need to know stuff? And why do I need to be the one to bring that to them? <laughs> and sometimes it holds me back from being like, okay, don't be a know it all. Don't be a, you know, don't, they didn't ask them, don't tell them what to do until they ask, you know? So I, I battle with that in sometimes in my own life, but overall and why we chose to start educating our, our own kids is because when we like like the more that we know the more yes opportunity is open and if you think of it like climbing the ladder or getting the good job i think th that motivation for me is secondary to just the more that we're aware of ourselves of other people mm. how to think about things um the more personal power and autonomy we have mm. you know to affect positive change in this world um i know that um, with all the crazy, you know, stuff that's happened these past couple of years, people, you know, being at each other's throats about the, being on this side of the fence or that side of the fence. Well, I found that like the more, <laughs> you, you don't know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Whatever do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I found that like because these conflicts are arising, it's a battle of information. Like, well, the more you know about this, the better decision you'll make about this. And, and it can be that. But I find that the more that we know and the more that we press into understanding each other, the more empathy we have for each other and the more we're able to just love better. You know, I think my personally, that's my motivation is to is to love better. Like I educate my kids about history and science and how to use math practically in everyday life because understanding those skills is going to allow them to help others and to love others better and to be an effective force in this world mm. you know we don't educate to get them into harvard or princeton i mean that would be cool but you know but why you know to, to what end i think the goal is to always ask to what end why am i publishing this book why why even put in the heartache and effort into writing it all who's going to read it who's going to care those are always the the self-doubt things that creep in but instead if we ask ourselves well why not why not me what why shouldn't we put more effort into learning this or t or into teaching this because we never know who we're going to affect and it's about leaving a legacy it's about um passing that on and living the life that we've been given to live well you know mm, nice. that's so. great um what uh i know we have to wrap up i'm watching the time uh what else what's on the horizon for you what are you working what's what's next i know you're just starting your book i hate to ask you what's next but uh, what's your immediate focus right now? Well, currently I'm, you know, promoting the Christmas book because it is Christmas season. But even as your people watch this after the holidays and things, um, having an eye on what's coming next is important. And when I was talking about enoughness earlier, that's the, that's the next project that I'm building on i'm i'm trying to go slowly although i want to go all in right because i want to like do it all right now but i'm working on building out the concept of enoughness so how to how to put this in an online format do i need to put together short talks or short encouragement pieces or bring out like the main problems that moms are facing when it comes to not feeling like enough um uh, so i'm kind of I'm almost kind of storyboarding that right now. Actually, can I show you something? Yeah, funny? please. I yeah. have. You look, remind me of Deanna Day Young. She has endless props when we talk to her. <laughs> she's, like, she's just she pulling props know. out of like, she felt like a magician. She was just pulling props out of everywhere. She's, oh, you got the whiteboard. Like you can see it. My office probably looks scattered, but like I keep whiteboards everywhere. So I'm like, I oh. brainstorm all the time all the time like what does enoughness mean i draw arrows i draw pictures wow. and then i have and then i have the giant whiteboard that i brainstorm on too. <laughs> so yeah. i i have these things that i move around um 
uh, I have to be careful. I have to have things in different places. I have to have visuals. So I storyboard the next concept of where things are going, and then I have to choose a time to hone it down. Okay. So you're going to talk about this. These are going to be your main pillars, and I actually do teach a content creation um, course too. That's kind of going to come out in the next year. Um, how to basically get your content done for like a year. If you had like a year's worth of content, you can create within within like an hour. Wow. Because Sign you're being asked specific questions. Yeah, yeah, I know it's gonna be good. Sign me up, yeah, absolutely. That's exciting. I saw, I wanna uh, mention one thing and then I promise we'll sign off because I know you have to go. Um, you, I saw a baking thing. I heard the most brilliant thing on, I think it was, it was a finance guy was talking about um, investment mix. And he was talking about it in terms of a cake. I don't know why, but he was saying like, you have your sugar and your flour and um, your milk and your dairy. And like on their own, those things taste fine, but there's always the baking soda and nobody eats baking soda by itself, but <laughs> yeah. it's necessary. It's necessary to the baking process. And he was likening like some type of stock or something to the baking soda of stocks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So yeah, it takes all parts to get to a whole thing of whatever your enough is. Like even that the bland random ingredient that doesn't stand alone is necessary for enough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Well, where can if people want to follow you on this journey, where can they find you? I'm at practicalfamily.org. Okay. And um you will find everything from there basically i'm on i'm on facebook um instagram tiktok uh youtube we have a youtube channel that's we're building out our videos from past interviews and things and um the, because the enoughness thing is coming i'm also starting a new podcast on on just wow. being enough and the old podcast will be there i'm not actively working on all the things remember at, at all times but the all the the hundred something episodes from the first podcast will be there and then we'll repurpose that eventually. And then the new one will be just going forward and it will inform the new book manuscript to the new, you know, whatever else is coming next. Yeah. It's an Great. exciting journey. Well, anyone Great. who's listening, make sure you sign up for that. Cause I'm going to put, I'm going to be following along for sure. <laughs> learning at, learning at your feet. Is there anything, I know I sent you some sample questions. Is there anything that was on that list that I didn't get to ask you that you wanted to answer? Oh man, I'm sure there is. Oh. I mean, we talk long enough. You know, can we can we schedule another time to do this? Because we yes. can just talk whatever. Yes. I would love to talk to you about the Facebook trolls that came out once I started promoting oh, this. Oh, we podcast. didn't get to that. That's yeah. right. We will talk about that. We need to record a little bonus. Yeah, we so, should. Quick backstory: Jen publishes this beautiful book, and then right away, people were criticizing you about anything and everything having to do with religion, Jesus, it, it showing up on their feed when they don't want it to, uh, Facebook, Facebook creates controversy. I don't know if you all know this yet, but Facebook oh, yeah. is the, has become the type of platform that it wants you to engage. So in creating the controversy by showing my, my Christian book to a bunch of atheists, apparently, <laughs> They all come out in droves and they're all, you know, keyboard warriors with no, no real profile behind them. But what they don't know is that all of that negative engagement boosted my numbers. <laughs> That's how the algorithm works. And hey, whatever. Thank That's you. Funny. Thank I, you for commenting. Yeah, yeah it right. Seem like social media. Yeah. It's just all social media. It's just a place where. One time I put on Twitter, there was a guy, person that had a snake in their garage. I said, oh, that looks like a mean snake. Someone said, how do you know it's mean? <laughs> okay. I don't know it's mean. Maybe it's a friendly snake. Maybe it's a funny snake that likes to joke around and hang out. But I'm just saying, like, you know, the people are very, you could just say, like, oh, it's sunny. It's sunny for who? <laughs> I don't know. It's just sunny. Not, not where I live. Like, all right, you're right. Anyway, so it, it can be warm with you. Like, wow. Wow. We're going to put that yeah. on. The, yeah, we need a follow-up for that one. All right, okay. then. Um, Thank you so much. Thank for your you very, time. very much. Thank we you. really appreciate it. We're gonna oh, we're gonna hang here and wrap up, but thank you so much. You go have a beautiful day. Give give Hawaii our love. Aloha. I will. Aloha. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. My goodness. Well, what'd you think of that? That was great. Yeah. That was great. Enough. Is it enough? What's enough? Who's enough? How how do you know if you have enough or are enough or doing enough, right? 
Those are some serious topics. Well, like yeah, it. I think when you do, well, when you don't have, when you have a list of things that you want to accomplish and you mark them off, that is one way to feel like it's enough. If you don't, you're just kind of winging it. I feel like in that empty space of not really knowing where you're going, mm. you kind of like just, you mentioned a map, you're kind of driving in circles. You can feel like you're not doing anything because maybe you're not doing enough because you don't have a plan. But if you can say like, I'm just going to do these five things today, whatever they are, one, two, three, four, five. Personally, that then I feel like enough in terms mm. of like, okay, I said I was going to do these five things. I did these five things. That's what I can do today. Yeah. And then I lie in bed and worry about everything else. But I mean, at least I feel like I've accomplished something. Yeah, or a sense of completion, which is what drives me. Like, I don't like to start things I can't finish. I don't like to pick up stuff I'm not going to be able to put away. Um, yeah. I don't laugh. He's laughing at my. No, I'm not thinking about the dog. He's laughing at He's my. Oh, I progress. thought he was going like to comment on my clutter. Yeah, but that's a problem. Like the unfinished business part of it um, takes up a lot of room. So yeah. how we'll ask this question in the group later in the week. What, how do you define enough for different people? It's different things, and I think that's going to be a really important question for her to dig into in the year ahead. Bud Fox asks Gordon Gecko, oh. how much is enough? How many waters, how many, see my um, junk back there. how many uh, yachts can you water ski behind? How much is enough? It's not enough, pal. Someone wins, someone loses. There you go. Great movie. So enough for Gordon Gecko was a winner and a loser. It was never, That's, it was a zero sum game, zero pal. Sum game. There's winners and there's losers. There you go. That's from Wall Street, if anyone isn't. Yeah, 25. Uh, like, that's like, you know, <laughs> that's right when they started with talkies. <laughs> All right. That's my signal to sign up when Jim gets silly. So um, until next week. Oh, by the way, next week, it's going to be just me and Jim. We're going to reflect back on the last 12 weeks. Um, Yes, we are going to close out this season and we are already lining up um, more interviews for the second season. I'm going to talk to, I think I'm going to, we're going to talk to some people who actually have published some books um, who are on the other side of it now and get their reflections on their process. So um, until then, set your alarms for whatever you time, for whatever time you feel most creative and productive and then go rise and write. We will see you again next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.